two companies control 100% of mobile, right? Yep. Google is the fastest growing um, operating system in connected televisions. Yep. Um, Amazon is the second largest distributor of tele you know, television software in the United States. For today's episode of uh, A Guy With A Scarf, I'm happy to introduce uh, the world-renowned media universe cartographer, uh, Evan Shapiro. Hi, Evan. Hi, how, how are you? you? Good, good, good. I'm Thanks good. for having I'm good. me. I'm good. So I see that uh, today you're going out with one of your 2024 predictions. So that's a, that's a good moment to talk to you. Um, quickly, for the few people in the industry that don't know who Evan Shapiro is. Who are you? Uh, I'm a longtime media exec. I guess I'm a recovering media exec. Um, for the last uh, half dozen years or so, I've been writing about the industry on my newsletter, Media War and Peace, um, pontificating about uh, the media industry <laughs> on LinkedIn, which is uh, where most of my community resides. Yes. Uh, speaking about um, the media universe at any conference that'll that'll fly me there, uh, yeah. and uh, consulting um, through my change agency, eShap, um, with media companies uh, on various different kind of outsourced strategy issues. Yeah, and uh, we can say one of the things for which you're famous is this bubble thing. <laughs> can you, <laughs> yeah, we need to put glasses. Sorry, it's, it's whatever big I c could do it. Yeah, no, it's that's sophisticated. It's meant to be zoomed in on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, so this is, um, I started uh, making this media map about four years ago. Oh. Um, I actually made it um, to begin with for a class that I teach uh, both at Fordham University and NYU. Um, the class is not a case study class, it's uh, media in real time. Um, so each week we discuss what's happening and, and we track the changes. And the changes are fast. I mean, just between Labor Day and now, um, this universe has added somewhere around $2 trillion in value. Wow. Um, most of that amongst just six companies. Yeah, yeah I would say 80% yeah, of that just with Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, NVIDIA, and Meta. Um, and um, that's both uh, really impressive, um, uh, really scary that, that that much wealth is concentrated uh, among six collections of uh, uh, oligarchs. And, and lastly, just kind of shows you the rate of change um, that uh, is pulsing through this universe now. And that's really what the map is meant to do, is, is to track the change in, in semi-real time. And just for everybody, the, the, the map is based, in this case, on revenues. I think you did Actually, one no, the, 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 the map, the X uh, axis of this map is market capitalization, not revenue. Yeah. Uh, See, sorry, market capitalization. Sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. And it, and it should be noted that right now, Apple is worth more than any company has ever been worth. Um, and it's crucial that you look at the context of that. Their third third quarter earnings report was awful. Yeah, it was, it was terrible, and that was a month ago. Um, iPhone sales are slow. To all other device sales are down. Listen to that for a second. Apple's <laughs> iPhone uh, 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 growth, sales growth, was just two percent in third quarter. Um, every other device category is down in sales. Um, and so they, now their, their services business is growing. So that's TV and music and news and fitness and gaming uh, and cloud. Um, but that also includes revenues from the app store, um, mm -hmm. which would be taxes that they charge on top of app purchases. Um, that's, a, that's a revenue stream that's going to be challenged in, next year. Google just lost a very big case with Epic. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Uh, and that's going to change the nature of purchases made both in Google Play and the App Store. Yep, but in yep. all of that context, all of that context, Apple's market valuation went up. And that's because they are a massive, bigger than any country almost, um, very diverse set of revenue inputs, flywheel. And the market is betting long on Apple and Microsoft and NVIDIA and uh, Alphabet. Um, which is almost near its all-time uh, market valuation high, um, and Amazon. And I saw that basically 
instead of spending, if you, if you want, the day day and night thinking where you would invest, if like one year ago or one year and a half ago, you would invest in this company, you would have done 34. Just those six. Just those yeah. six. They outpaced basically the right. entire market. <laughs> Um, I mean, even Meta is almost worth a trillion dollars again, only for the second time in in their history. When I first started mapping um, the media universe, they were worth around seven hundred uh, billion dollars. They're now worth close to nine hundred billion dollars, and they crossed over the trillion dollar mark for a minute a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this is despite the fact that their growth just is. I mean, it's fine. It's fine, um, but it's basically back on track of where they were three or four years ago. Not. The growth is just yeah. based on two or three shitty years, and now they're doing better. Um, but the because three companies, just three companies, go back to that map for a second. Be yes. Because just three companies control 60% of the ad revenue in the United States. Amazon, Amazon, Meta, and Google, and uh, Alphabet. Um, they, they, it's very easy to see the sh how the shape of this universe is going to continue to change over the, the rest of this decade. Um, Apple and Alphabet control 100% of phone relationships on earth. Yeah. 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 Um, Microsoft is. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's 100%. Crazy. 7 billion, 7.5 billion uh, mobile phone users controlled by just two companies. Um, and that's all of the app sales on earth. <laughs> Two American companies, just two American companies. These are, I mean, you know, there <laughs> are there are some foreign companies. If you zoom in on here, of some foreign, some there are European companies. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of Latin American companies. I don't think yeah. there are any. Uh, well, there are obviously some Jap, uh, some Asian companies with Sony and Reliance. Yeah. Um, and so you know, it, it this does try to take in consideration the entire planet. There are no public service media companies on this map because I cannot value them. <laughs> okay. It is, yeah, it is impossible to size them. I, I hear it from public service media and once in a while I will put them back on here <laughs> and I'm guessing at their, their media valuations. Anyway, yeah. so this map was meant to be the backdrop of these conversations. It's very, I find it, even though there's so much data that it's impossible to take in at one glance on this map, like any map or like any box score or like any stock exchange, all of the information you need to have a conversation and make decisions around this ecosystem, media, are all here. You don't have to turn the page. Um, and this is meant to track all of those inputs, subscriber numbers, user numbers, uh, and, and crucially, uh, market valuation resources, financial resources um, across time and space so that you can know where you are. Two, two, two considerations. One, why do you think these market valuations are so time high? Is, is there a logic apart the flywheel that you mentioned before? When you look is at there a combined, combined there is, logic, there, there, is, there, is, there is an outlier. To, there are two outliers to this. So the two smallest, NVIDIA and Meta. And by the way, the two with the greatest fluctuation in market valuation over the last year. So NVIDIA is now worth twice what it was a year ago. So is Meta. They're both they've both a hundred percent higher than they were about a year year and a half ago. Everybody else is at an all time or near an all time high, but their their fluctuation up and down it's just not that dramatic. It climbs over time. So over the last four years, Apple is now worth I think somewhere around seventy percent more than it was when I started mapping. Um, but in any given year, it goes up and down only so much. It continues to go up, <laughs> but it will go down. A year ago, Apple was worth you know closer to two trillion than it was to three. Um, so, but as a percentage of their whole, it, it, it doesn't fluctuate that much. The, 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 when you look at the four biggest companies on this map, who have been the four biggest companies on this map since I started mapping, and who are have consistently been four of the largest companies in all history and the four largest companies in all of media. They have one thing in common. They all have very diversified uh, mm. revenue streams beyond media. <clears throat> yeah, they're all relatively new, newer entrants to media, but Google's revenue comes as much from search as anything else. Apple's revenue yes. comes crucially from devices, which is why they're moving into media. Microsoft yep. comes primarily from enterprise software and and gaming, um, although that is that is their entry into media. Yep. 
Um, and Amazon has one of the greatest, if not the greatest, uh, revenue flywheel of all time. Cloud, Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, advertising, commerce, um, which is the big engine of their enterprise. Um, but yeah. each one of them does not no, no does not rely on media as its sole or even nearly its biggest source of revenue. Um, yeah. And that's why they are larger than everyone else. If this was an oil and gas map, all of the companies yeah. seem to kind of do the same thing and they're about the same size. Yeah. Um, in On this map, the companies that do far more than media and are using media as a software to sell a much larger flywheel, those are the ones that are the, the largest and are valued the most over the stretch of time. We haven't mentioned a traditional in like whatever nine, nine minutes. We haven't mentioned a traditional media company, even if we were started talking about the media universe. So that's and that, that's basically and that's the because point. you you can't you can't get to your consumer unless you go through these companies. Two companies control one hundred percent of mobile, right? Yeah. Google is the fastest growing um, operating system in connected televisions. Yeah. Um, Amazon is the second largest distributor of tele you know, television software in the United States, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, they, they, they master so much control. If you do pivot to traditional media companies, you start with Netflix, which is really a tech company. Yeah. Yeah. Or Spotify, also a tech company. And yeah. both of those companies are facing major issues. Netflix is not near its all time high, but it is, it is, you know, it had a pretty good year. Their major issue is because they only do one thing, television subscriptions. It's the only business they have. They're starting okay. to dabble in advertising and gaming, but those yeah, things yeah. are not material to their business model. They are a subscription business. They, they are going to face challenges in the year ahead. Um, because that revenue growth is slowing and will continue to slow down over time. Spotify, I know you were you had a position on them lately. Well, it's the same thing. Spotify is almost exclusively a subscription-based uh, uh, business model. They have some advertising. About thirteen percent of their revenue comes from advertising, but their costs are skyrocketing. Netflix also faces this issue, but for for Spotify, these are costs that are completely beyond their own control. So the cost of renting music, which is their business, renting and reselling music, yeah, that's their entire business. Um, it th those costs are are going to go up because the labels demand it and the artists demand it and they cannot grow because they do only one thing, you know, primarily from a revenue standpoint, they can't grow fast enough on the revenue side to keep up. They've never been so, able to. Yeah. And Spotify seems more in trouble than Netflix. Yeah. But when you look at, yes, much more, they've never been profitable. I yeah. Mean, that's, they, that's they, they just crazy. laid off 1500 people. So, um, yeah, yeah I've seen know, that. Yeah. But they are also, you know, they are also kind of more mature in their business model, um, to a certain extent than Netflix is crucially, they do have an actual advertising business. Netflix does not. Yeah. The rate of its growth, the slow, very slow rate of, uh, Spotify's ad, uh, advertising sales growth is a cautionary tale for Netflix. Netflix mm. is entering the life cycle that Spotify is now in. That advertising revenue is going to grow very slowly because users don't really prefer, especially younger users, do not prefer an ad product. Even not younger. An ad free I hate, product. I don't have to pay for, <laughs> and that's that's why Spotify works so. Well. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, staying more on this uh, pure streaming monetization. And you discuss advertising more in the traditional OTT space. Avo, sorry, Asvod, Avod, Netflix, Fast. I know you're also entering uh, the discussion around Fast lately. How do you see this business model playing together? Do you think that every well, me successful, whatever, <clears throat> or a future OTT will have to do a bit of everything to stay afloat? Yeah, um, when you when you look at television on the planet Earth. Uh, and I'll focus on Europe and, and North America yeah. and Latin America for a second, because Asia and Africa are very different in their consumption. Yeah. They're a mobile first uh, community. Um, but in Europe, uh, North America and, and Latin America, the television ecosystem has been um, 
been very uh, uh, protected. <laughs> so for the last 30 years, um, television in the United States, the bundle of services that it's inside has been, television has been protected by broadband, telephone, and other services. At first they were an ad business, then they became a paid ad business, and then they were bundled inside broadband and phone. In Europe, and that's very true in, in Latin America as well. In Europe, because of public service media, and this is also true to a certain extent of Asia, um, because of the, 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 the size, scale, scope, and safety net that public service media has, um, you know, basically paid for by the government or the taxpayer um, as a free service, that creates this you know, connection to free that is, is different mm -hmm. from, from North America. Also, when you look at the growth of, of paid, um, there are other services that are coming along, uh, along with it, and, and, they, and they've experienced great growth. Now we've, that business has matured, the public service media, I think, will, will gain even more power in the next era mm -hmm. in Europe over paid media services, local paid media services. I think yeah. it's going to be very difficult for the ProSiebens and the ITVs and the Skies to com compete with free <laughs> unless yeah. they have free and they're all my five paramount just compl uh, uh, combined yeah. with pluto i think sky will absolutely need a free service uh to compete i think itv itv already has a free service uh, a fast service uh, to compete yeah. um but i think crucially they're going to have to do more than um than just provide television BBC is a multi-pronged uh, uh, service, just like Amazon is. Um, ZDF is not as much so, but they have a lot of audio businesses, and yeah. they have they have other uh, other businesses. Um, I think really, just like in North America, where Comcast and Charter are moving into new areas like mobile um, and streaming uh, bundles. Um, and Amazon has the most unbreakable subscription there is, media across the, the, the universe, pure media players are going to have to find ways to either bundle themselves with others, which will reduce their profits, or provide more than one service to compete on the same level as an Amazon, an Apple, a Google, and uh, a Microsoft. Yeah, great, great point. Um You know, I, I spent my whole career, 35 years in sport, in sports tech. And uh, I'm thinking, what does it mean uh, in my, for my audience also that is very sports centric? Maybe start from what this big tech and media agglomerate, conglomerate should do with sport uh, from now on. Well, we know I, it's traditional. We know there have been, you know, yeah, yeah. the golden egg, et cetera. But what do you see sport, the role of sport in this? I mean, the, the sports is valuable not just because of its live viewing, but because of the cult-like relationship between yeah. the, the, the end user and the product. It's not rational. As an Eagle, Philadelphia Eagles fan, <laughs> I can tell you, <laughs> it, is, fan. it is not rational. It's like religion. And there yeah. are a half dozen or, or so leagues, the NFL, Premier League, Indian Premier League cricket, the NBA, yeah. Um, and, and so formula one now, um, that are, are almost indelible there, the, the, the value that they will accrue over time. I don't see it, a, a scenario by which that market goes down. <laughs> um, so they are going to be able to almost write their own ticket. What's going to happen is companies that do many other things like Apple and Google and Amazon and Microsoft and Nvidia and Meta are going to be able to pay outrageous prices for sports. They're going to they're going to drive up in the last negotiation for Thursday night football, one game a week, 16 games a year. Um, Amazon drove up the price by twice. And by the way, that had the effect on all of the rights in the ecosystem. Yep. Everything doubled in price. The NBA negotiations next year are going to quadruple mm -hmm. the value of the television streaming rights of the NBA, a league that only plays in really one country in the entire planet.
Same thing with yeah. the NFL. Yeah. Um, yeah. Premier, the next big Premier League renegotiation, the next Olympics negotiation, the next Champions League negotiation, the next, uh, the current, the last Indian Premier League cricket um, renegotiation with Hot Star and Reliance doubled the value of Indian Premier League. Doubled yeah. in a year. That's going to happen again. Uh, uh, Disney's going to about to sell their hot star business to to Reliance yeah. to create yeah. a monopoly. Um, so so that that is, I think, a really important uh, context for all of sport globally. And I think every country that has its own leagues is going to experience the same thing. Big tech is going to come in, outbid for the most popular sports. Uh, in, in the ecosystem and the public service media or the local paid media are going to have a choice to make. Warner Brothers Discovery, Disco Brothers, has a choice to make around the NBA next spring. Are yeah, they going to yeah, overpay yeah. or are they going to get out of the business? And that's uh, the legacy media players, public service media, the ProSiebens, the skies of the world, they're going to have, they're going to be at a crossroads. Disney, Fox, Paramount, Warner Brothers. The reason why uh, Sherry Redstein Stone wants to sell um, Paramount right now is because she she knows she's coming up on renegotiation of rights with the NFL and a bunch of other sports that her company cannot justify the cost. Can't mm -hmm. justify it. There's no. They might have if they had the protective shell of the old pay TV yeah. system, but they yeah. do not anymore. And that is going to be the major trend over the next sixty months in sport. Big tech is going to force the price up. Traditional media is going to have a, a choice to make. And just the cost of these rights and the and because of their cult-like relationship between the end user locally, Kansas City Royal fans, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, Liverpool fans, um, the th that is going to change the nature of how television works just because of sports. Um, yeah. If you are a sports rights holder, there has never been a better time to be alive. Now there's the big leagues like Premier and NFL. The smaller sports are gonna have to figure out their own economics. Largely that will be on the growth curve as a new sport is emerging. Um, they're gonna have to give it away for free, basically the way they did on the television series on Netflix. Yeah. They, they basically yeah. gave away insights into the show. Now they got paid for that, but not the money they're going to make now in the new renegotiation. They yeah, use yeah. it as a marketing hook to grow their audience. And now they're at a place where they can double their value in their next renegotiation. That's the track that every sport. So the Kansas city Royals who are, who really just got screwed by Bally and Sinclair yeah. in that yeah. <laughs> media rights bundle, they're going to have to go out and give away a lot of games for free over the next couple of years while the team gets good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a really big thing. Like they're not very good. So they're down to their basic core cult at this point. The Yankees are always yes networks and Yankees are, and the Cal Dallas Cowboys and Chelsea and man, you, they're always going to be able to demand very high premiums um, because they are, they have established themselves as brands bigger than the sport itself to a certain extent. The, the, um, I would also, I argue the Lakers and individual sports stars like Messi. Um, yeah. And Messi is Messi is a really good uh, model for the future of sport. If you own a set of IP, in this case, the name Lionel Messi, yeah. <laughs> you make a multifaceted deal around merchandise and subscriptions and advertising and everything that you can possibly do. At the other end of the scale, you're going to have to build your audience, build your cult, build the value of your enterprise, and then you're going to be able to trade at multiples uh, of your yeah. audience. So that was a very long answer. But no, don't it, worry. to a certain extent, the future of sports IP is the future of all television. They, they, they are intrinsically twined like no other genre is with television. Not even, perhaps maybe news, maybe news, but that's a completely different set of economics. Both are live. Yeah. yeah. But the one thing that I have to say, yeah, I'm also a Torino fan, which is the second right. team against Juventus in, in my city, which means it's only a religion. And I always notice that maybe the other strong loyalty that people have with the brand is, is with Apple. But 
the, the sport one is transgenerational. My granddad was a Torino fan. My dad was. My son. Well, Apple, was. Apple, is cross, <laughs> Apple is cross-generational. Yeah, too. My, family, my entire true. family is an Apple family. My mother, yeah. me, and my kids are all Apples. Yeah. So that's three yeah. generations. Uh, uh, as yeah. long, Basically, as long as Apple has been alive, we've been an Apple family. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. not true. I was I was a Microsoft person for some time. Still, <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> still, and I miss my BlackBerry terribly. Still, <laughs> did you have you seen that movie? By the way, it's a really good movie. The Black, yeah. the movie about BlackBerry. There are two really yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. movies yeah. that came out this year about business models. Tetris, yeah. actually three. Uh, the Air Jordan movie uh, with Matt yeah, Damon. Amazing. Uh, yeah. uh, the Tetris movie with uh, Edrin. Uh, what's his name? And yeah. uh, the BlackBerry movie. Which had a really interesting collection of, of people. And I can add, I, I don't, yeah, I think it's still this year, the Spotify series that I'm still surprised when I mention it. The Spotify series? Have it, the playlist on Netflix. It's well, amazing. It. Is it good? Well, well, the first I mean, time to, okay, to me and people in our business, it's like looking I have at not heard, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. I, I have not heard. So they did, a, they did some marketing mistake because is it a, uh, it's six is it episodes. Is it fiction or is it scripted? It, uh, it's scripted, it's fiction. Yeah, yeah, fiction. I, I yes. have not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's, it's so well, that's the problem. Because... With Netflix, that's the problem with all content now. There is so much content across all these platforms. Yeah. Uh, it's a paradox of choice. Um, and it's created uh, this this glut of, of content down below the top that isn't being seen by very few people kind of contextually to the whole of all of television. Remember, there was a time Seinfeld's last show had like 50 million, 40 million viewers, 40 million. Whoa. There's football games. Don't get that now. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the, the, the Academy Awards don't get that now. No, uh, no, no, no. the Grammys certainly don't get that now. Um, the only thing that gets that is the Super Bowl. It's the only yep. the only thing that gets that size uh, size of audience, or somewhere else in the world, FIFA, not the United yeah. States. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, you, yeah. we we are in a completely uh, uh, different era, and and so um, I, I think that that part of the reasons why sports so important is because it still does you know the the 94 of the top broadcast top what most watched shows in the united yep. states last year were, fo were football games american football yeah. i'm sure that's very true in uh, in the uk and and every other yeah, country in italy yeah italy. and and for example the, there's one thing that and um, and, I and cricket in india 42 yeah, million absolutely. concurrent streams geo served yeah. uh, for a match recently yeah. And one thing that is different in Europe, I think, that in the last two months, Premier League did a four-year deal and Italian Serie A did a five-year deal. The big tech was not there and Sky basically won most of it. So that's a weird... And, and I've talked to people in those leagues and they're starting to think uh, that, that they always said, maybe we go direct to consumer, but then people started to do the economics and it didn't work. What do you, you think at some point sport will go there to consume? I think if someone can do it. Yeah, I mean, I think it. sport's not there in other territories yet because streaming just isn't yeah. as mature yet. Yeah. And companies, business models aren't as mature yet. So Apple really just yeah. started getting into American sports last year. With MLS, Google, yeah. Google really just started to get into American sports last year. Uh, Amazon just started to get into American sports last year. And this is their, remember, 40% of all media money spent on the planet Earth is in America. Yeah. So um, you're st you, that's where you're going to go first. Yeah. Those are really expensive rights. <laughs> really expensive. So yes, but 48 months is really just not that end of. Yeah. We will still be in this decade. By the end of this yeah. decade, most important sports rights on the planet Earth will be in at least a decent portion controlled by big yeah. tech. I don't want to uh, steal your prediction for 2024. And remember, uh, but, uh, one thing, Sky yes, is yes. owned by an American company, a $200 no. billion dollar American company with American revenues that it's using to fund major investments in Europe and, and failing to do so. They're fine in the UK, but Sky around the rest yeah. of Europe is failing badly. Um, and yeah. so, you know, we'll see what happens to Sky over the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, what is the 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 theme? What you know, you have ten topics. There are so many topics you are managing and clearly mastering. What where is your passion now? What is the topic 
in this in, in this obviously passion in this uh my, my passion realm. my passion right now is is not a topic it's uh it's creation um you know i think a lot of people think of me as an analyst um or a consultant, but in, 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 in reality, what I do every day is I wake up and I create. Today, I posted a very long piece um, on predictions for, for next year. I started working on that, you know, days ago, and I've been painting it. <laughs> um, and, and there's lots of imagery in it um, yep. for a couple of days, you know, for since the middle of last week. Um, and when you write that many words, as, as many words as I do on a weekly basis, really the, the, the act of creation is the central flywheel of my enterprise. So what I write creates traffic that comes to me uh, and provides me the economics that I need to live. And so my existence in the creator economy, or as I like to call it, the community economy, is probably my, my greatest passion right now. So the fact that I make shit on a daily basis and it generates enough income to keep me to the, in a lifestyle that I've become accustomed. <laughs> right. That is that is that is a major evolution for me. Seven years ago, I had never done that. Everything I ever earned um, was really born out of the corporate media economy in some way, shape or form. Even back when I worked in theater, it was a different kind of corporate media economy. But it had always been at the whim and mercy and pleasure of big companies, um, big and small companies. Um, yeah. Now I exist as a sole artist in the world, and what I make is based on what I make. That so is going describe, to be. Say again. Sorry, sorry. Go. No, no, go, go, go. That is sorry. going to be one of the great engines um, of the media economy and the media universe for the next forever. Like from this point on, um, half of of the revenue and opportunity and audience that exists on that map in the media universe is going to come through the creator or community economy. Even if it's on a, on a corporate economy platform, yeah. like TikTok yeah. or Twitch, it is still the creator economy. Roblox is a creator economy yeah. ecosystem. Um, yeah. And so Substack podcasting writ large, it, yes, it uses Spotify, Spotify. Yes, it uses Apple. Um, yes, some make corporate deals, the Obamas, Joe Rogan, uh, call yeah. me daddy, call her daddy. But yeah. most it lives outside of the corporate economy and is a really creator or community economy based um, operation um, because the revenues are asymmetrical and the lifestyle is very creator focused. Um, that to me is the great passion that I have. I don't talk about it that much because not that many people in, in who pay my bills really want to no, talk I don't about pay the you <laughs> economy right, now, right? They no, really no. don't want to talk about it um, because they don't yeah. understand it and then they've got enough crises going at this moment. <laughs> but they also don't understand that YouTube, which is the greatest uh, creator community economy business ever built, mm. um, is going to destroy them <laughs> using the creator and community economy as its backbone. Um, and, and, and those people who do not incorporate, it's another new diversification step, do not incorporate the creator community economy into their business models will lose. It will absolutely mm. lose. Yeah. I wanted to say you described my last 10 months, 35 years working for a vendor in sports tech with the biggest client in sport. And then I'm basically became a creator. And I have this, I'm, and create, what you described is exactly my day. I've also started creating outside of my professional thing with books and music and whatever. And the more you so, create, the more opportunity that comes your way, right? Yeah, yeah. At, I still have- Crucially, not just create, but publish. You do, yeah, yeah. that is part of it. And, and I think um, brands and, 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 and I think, Carlo, to, to your point, a lot of people who now find themselves, the number one prediction I made for 2024 was about jobs and yeah. the workplace of, of the media economy and that your people like us are going to have to find alternative ways of making a living if they're going to survive. And crucially, I think this is the most important, not just survive, but thrive. Um, yeah. it, it, every company, every brand, every artist, every executive who wants to work in media from this point forward is gonna to have to understand how to master the creator or community economy. 
It is just table stakes. Yeah. And I, I agree that it's about creation and publishing. And uh, I am the one, the few interested in, uh, I don't pay your bills, but one of the few interested in this creator community. I, I like the creator community economy because, for example, you know, you, you as you said, your network is on LinkedIn, obvious. I'm sure, as me, you have not great opinions on how LinkedIn is a creator tool or creator platform. A great it's one. It's a disaster. Yeah. A great yeah, one no. on my side, but the tools are. Yeah, are no, the tools suck because they're not a creator platform. But yeah, well, why? 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 Because <laughs> ah, Microsoft on. is a very, I mean, think about the difference between Microsoft and Apple for a second. Why are you no yeah. longer a Microsoft uh, family? And that's why. <laughs> that yeah. that difference in, in perspective. Even today is Microsoft? I, uh... I'm surprised how yeah how yeah no, Microsoft they, is a very is a very game. left brain company compared to Apple, which is a very right brain company, and mm. they just are they approach the world very differently. Uh, neither mm. is wrong, by the way. Both are mm -hmm. the two most successful, two largest media companies in media history, Microsoft mm. and Apple. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, there, there is the, there are half the people on earth who think one way and <laughs> that's yeah. actually, it's actually 40%, 30% of the world thinks Apple's way. They just happen to be yeah. the richest 30%. Yeah. 30% <laughs> of the world uh, thinks Microsoft's way uh, yeah. and Google's way. Uh, and they happen to be the poorer 70%. <laughs> No, and, that may and, not be a popular phrase, but that's just the way the world. <laughs> one one thing on that side, you um, how much you invest in distribution in terms of effort? Publishing is it is publishing distribution, or I think your growth has been organic as a brand, hundred percent, right? Yeah. So because I think distribution, uh, understanding where to publish, when, how, etc., I think it's important. Well, I, it's it's organic. promotion may I don't know what do you think promotion. Can obviously it's, it's awareness is good. I disagree. I disagree. It's organic in as much as I do not pay to promote it. Okay. Okay. However, okay. I spend a tremendous amount of time, effort, uh, and capital on promoting it. So this podcast okay. is a really good example. I I'm not yeah. here because I like you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> no, you have an audience, and and it's yeah. a, it's yeah. a relatively newer because you specialize in sports. I do not. Yeah. I talk yeah. about sports exactly. a lot, but it is not yeah. my front facing. You're also much yeah. more European than I am, although yes. I love Europe. Um, and so you know, I actually do like your content, and I like you, but I'm here to promote my brand, and so I oh, put oh. a tremendous amount of time, which is also money. Yeah, writing stupid posts on LinkedIn many times a day, which is counter to the the conventional wisdom uh, of those platforms, and and into being at conferences and going yes. out and doing panels and constantly putting myself in, in a position where I am marketing the brand without having to say, "Hey, subscribe to my newsletter." <laughs> or, no, you know, yeah. no, I don't do very much. I do no paid promotion, and I yeah. do not do overt promotion i don't do yeah. hey read my newsletter please here i i just made it which is one of the things that makes me stop watching a youtube video to be honest if you do it at the beginning i normally stop right and and what i do is i just make a shit ton of content which yeah. hopefully and they want makes you value my content yep. and some of the the revenue i get is for direct from subscriptions most of the revenue i make is people asking me to come do this for yep. a fee at their yep. company or at their conference or whatever. Yep. Yep. And then a bunch of my subscribers are very high monthly fees um, yep. to consult with them and to give them exclusive access to content or intellectual yep. property, which is based yep. on what I write, what I research, and what I do on a daily basis. Yeah. Love it. And you're doing it really well. Thank you. As Thank are you. you, Evan. One thing that I discovered at, at, at IBC is that you were talking openly about your health issues. First, how are you doing and what was the decision behind going public uh, with that? Well, there was, a, there was an excellent chance that I was going to miss events, which I did uh, ah. um, this year because of my health. I have lymphoma, which is a very manageable disease, but I clearly have had it for a very long time uh, without knowing so, and it's kind of affected other elements of my health. Um, which I've written about. Um, and I made the analogy at IBC for the first time to the cancer yes. inside me 
between the cancer inside me and and the cancer yeah. inside the media um, e ecosystem. Um, the the reason I went public with it was because it, I was going to probably miss some stuff, which I did. Mip. Uh, and and a couple mm -hmm. of others, um, but also because my appearance was likely to change, whether I was going to lose my hair or what wound up happening is I just lost a ton of weight, which mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't really I couldn't really afford to lose, so I looked like, you know, I looked bad, like a hunger strike uh, activist. Um, mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the reasons. But the the bigger reason, um, and the, and every time I've written about it, I've made an analogy to A, the media ecosystem, but crucially to the things that we value most as individual people and citizens and humans inside the media ecosystem, which is our relationship to our work. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a very work first person on a daily basis. Um, I, I, for many years, have identified my, my personality with my job. Um, and I've intertwined my family life and, and my work life uh, to a great deal to a certain extent, probably past where I should have. And so talking mm -hmm. about it was a way to, I think, open up a conversation about what things in our lives are actually important mm -hmm. as opposed to the things we think are important. And I think in the context of 20,000 people losing their jobs in the media economy in the last year, this was a year to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But also, unfortunately, I found out how many people our age or younger or older go through health crises um, and mm. what the emotional toll um, that that takes. And I felt like it was an important conversation to be having with my contemporaries and people younger than me um, as they embark on their careers and decide what's important to them, decide mm -hmm. what their priorities are, um, mm -hmm. that it was, it, was, it was important to be openly human. Um, and I, and I try to do that in a way that isn't self-aggrandizing, but is more the start of a larger conversation. The reaction I've gotten to that stuff, I've written a lot. I've, I've, I've posted since I founded my newsletter, uh, two and a half years ago, I've, I've, I've put up almost 300 articles. Um, mm -hmm. these were, were the reaction was, was deeper and, and more emotional and more direct than anything else I've ever written. But I think I appreciated that because very often in the business uh, world, you're like, you have to isolate a bit your, who you are as a human, which I think the last few years uh, have a bit of a crisis on it because, I mean, we humans, maybe we are good in business because we are good humans or I think that that's crucial. And the relationship you build, I've been, I've been very often working long term with people people that I forgot for seven years, meaning we didn't work together, sorry, not that I forgot them, came back and say, hey, come, and we signed a multi-million contract in three months because they know you, and right. not because they know your role, because they know you, so that, that's Well, cool. and I think, I think that too many of us um, think the title on our business card is who we are. And, and there are a lot of people who are now out of work who, are too afraid to reach out to the people who they know, um, or they're too ashamed to talk about things um, because they don't have that they don't have that title anymore. And yeah. that's a that's a that I think we we identify ourselves too much in our jobs and not enough in the relationships that we build. And right now, I think it's important to understand what the value of your relationships in the world are and to put them central. Also, I think it's really important to understand what what makes you actually happy and to build a career around that. It may sound kumbaya and naive, <laughs> but the last couple of years, I think, have proven that oh, yeah. life is too short to give it up to a corporation who does not give a shit about Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yep, I agree. Yeah. And the, the sorry, just to close and let you go with your life no, today, I just plug in, in New York. The the one no no sorry the one thing that is uh, a bit different but on the same line I guess it's you're so open about politics uh, North American politics mostly uh, and it's also something that is in common but I, I think it's very similar apart that it's a moment in history when yeah in your country you should yeah I mean I have been pretty over about my politics for a long time um, I got arrested in 2000 for shutting down Times Square. Um, These I didn't know. These uh, I didn't know. <laughs> over, over the vote count, the Bush Gore vote count. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've yeah, been yeah. very, very, very open. And and part of the reason is, is I just don't want people to be surprised one day 
if I wind up in jail. Like you, you should know <laughs> what you're getting. I, I like people to understand that, that they know what they're getting when when yeah. when I come into your enterprise. Um, yeah. um, but but crucially, I've been way more open about it on LinkedIn and another forum. Yep. Um, because this is just a, a once in a once in a lifetime, once in a generation, once in a century moment. Yeah. Um, we are on the precipice of democracy's shift or demise, and yeah, yeah. Uh, that, you know, both all over the world, this is this is happening, and this is mm -hmm. too important a time for those of us who give a shit about the world to keep our mouths shut. Um, you know, mm -hmm. all that, all that needs for evil to succeed is good people do nothing. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I have no family that was killed in the Holocaust. We were all in America by that point. Um, but it is a part of my, uh, uh, lifestyle. The, the Holocaust mm -hmm. has been present in, you know, Jewish American lifestyle, you know, for every person, um, born in this country and, and who comes from a Jewish heritage. And so we take it never again is a very serious thought, mm -hmm. and and we are we are facing real crises as a as a society, and so yeah, I felt it was too important yeah. to to let it go. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that too. So thank you for your time. It's a great long conversation, and uh, see you in twenty twenty four then. Yeah, happy new year. Thanks. So okay, much. ciao, Evan. Ciao. Thank you so much. Cool. Grazie. Thanks. That was